Hello everyone, this is Steve Ulgaridis with Forex Analytics. I will be recording this uh, weeks ahead video um, in the place of uh, Blake Morrow. Blake is going to be away for one more day and then he's going to be back with us. Um, before we start, um, if you haven't tried uh, already Forex Analytics, you can just go to our homepage and you can sign up. It's just $1 for 10 days. And for those of you that have not attended our webinar yet, um, we strongly suggest that you do so. Um, it's uh, daily on uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time. Uh, it's one and a half hours. Uh, it's one hour of analysis and half an hour of um, interviews at the end. Dale Pinker is hosting and we really think that it's uh, valuable content uh, that you're going to enjoy. Now, let's go to um, our analysis and what we see for the week ahead. Um, we can safely say that the current theme is rather complicated. First of all, we're in the middle of the summer and uh, volatility has dropped quite a lot uh, in some of the instruments. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are some things, themes emerging in this uh, market that um, we can really have a look at. So, um, before we start with the FX world, um, we should actually notice uh, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we've had um, an effort uh, from the stock exchanges to actually correct lower, an effort that has so far um, failed. Um, I mean, for example, let's have a look at the S&P 500 index. Um, we were in an ascending uh, wedge. We did see a move lower, but uh, this price action definitely does not inspire uh, of something impulsive in nature. Um, actually, we've um, tested the 2400 zone already twice. Uh, we failed both times to drop below it, and as long as this... Uh, remains to be the main case, then uh, we should most probably expect that the more the consolidation gets prolonged, the higher the chances of a break in the direction of the trend, which of course is higher. Um, the picture is a little bit different having to do with the DAX. Um, here we've actually managed to, you know, progress even further, which is actually, uh, we broke below the ascending wedge, we did form um, a bear flag, uh, but as long as we trade above 11,800, you can also see it in the weekly chart. Uh, as long as we trade above this uh, level, we cannot turn overly bearish, but um, for sure, um, you know, the, the DAX is uh, obviously not being helped by uh, the Euro's strength and is uh, correcting lower. The next uh, level supportive is 12,100. So um, uh, stocks have been softer, but uh, you know the the moves lower and you know have not impressed us in any way. On the other hand, what is impressive is the fact that with all the <coughs> the dollar weakness that has gone through the market we haven't managed to see the precious metals capitalize on it. Actually, it's quite the opposite that we've seen. Um, we've seen gold break below uh, an, uh, a flat top triangle. Uh, we've been uh, into it since uh, late, uh, late, late January of this year. Um, we've uh, had a double top at uh, 1,295. And since then, we simply broke down. Um, we're currently testing the 50% uh, FIB. And uh, any move to continue lower should at least um, provide us with a retest of uh, this area and 1,190. In general, uh, no matter how you see it, uh, there is no um, argument for being constructive gold at least not unless we see something totally different than what we see here. This is also the big picture. In the big picture, we might still be in a bigger triangle. But even if that's the case, 
uh, the lower bound, the support of this triangle comes quite a lot lower. I would say it's at around 1,160. So uh, either way, uh, there is a good likelihood that we, we will see at least some more downside before uh, correcting higher or moving higher. We're, we're going to see, we need to see the structure and decide what we do from there. The double top rejection for sure and the false break above the descending uh, long-term trend line um, are uh, arguments to be short. Um, then we have silver. Uh, silver has been quite weak. Um, it has also <laughs> provided us with two flash crashes within roughly a period of uh, less than two weeks. Um, obviously, this price action um, is First of all, berries. Second of all, uh, one of the flash crashes was considered to be a fat finger. The second one was considered to be a legitimate order of around half a billion that went through uh, the most liquid uh, hours of the day. That's obviously not a normal market behavior. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the point is that somebody is trying to push the metal lower and they, they've successfully done so. Silver is already trading. At, at 15 month uh, month lows and that on itself is not not a bullish fact obviously um, we have several levels of, of support below us uh, the closest one is at uh, 15 and a half dollars um, a break below there um, should actually um, get us uh, to uh, 1480 um, and uh, regardless, as long as we trade below uh, sixteen dollars, uh, we cannot possibly consider the the pair constructive. Um, we we wouldn't even want to imagine what would happen uh, if we finally saw um, a reversal in the dollar. And since we're mentioning uh, the dollar, let's uh, have a look at the dollar index. So if we get to see some kind of a reversal in the dollar index. Uh, and that does not come along with some change in uh, uh, in, in the real yields, um, we, we would likely see an acceleration uh, lower for uh, the precious metals. So, um, you know, in any case, uh, we would not want to be bullish the metals at the moment. So, um, the dollar index, um, we've... We've had many attempts of rebounds, but all of them, all of them have have proven to be very, very weak. Um, we rebounded here uh, in 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 June. Uh, the rebound actually failed to even provide us with a higher high. It only did so intraday. Um, when we tested the the first actual area of resistance, uh, which was. Uh, at 99, 97, 75 or something like that. We immediately got rejected. Uh, we progressed to see a new low. We formed here a morning star formation. Uh, that was obviously a first good step to see some kind of a reaction. But following that, we once again failed to scale even the first resistance level, which is 9650. Uh, that brought more pressure to the dollar and we're currently um, in the verge of breaking out in new lows as well. The next uh, support level we have is at 95.10, 95.20 and you know it, it's it's quite likely that uh, that we're going to see that level because uh, you know th th there is there is nothing nothing to point us higher here at least not yet. I mean it's the sentiment that yeah it's oversold and you know it's it's bound for a rebound that uh, the arguments that the Fed is remains hawkish. We 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 saw some uh, some solid NFPs once again. Uh, the, the the wage component was a little bit soft, but the, the NFP print was very solid. The unemployment print re remains very low, even at 4.4. Uh, participation rate also showed an increase, which is something positive. But still, uh, dollar has failed to respond, and technically speaking, it's it's still broken uh, until proven otherwise. Um, there are some instruments, there are there are some currencies against the dollar that, you know, uh, provide some good risk reward setups. But that doesn't mean that those are going to manifest. For example, 
EURUSD is currently testing some long-term resistance. This is the daily. If you see it, the weekly, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, we have, uh, you know, um, a big resistance area here. It's uh, this channel's resistance. It's also this horizontal uh, zone. All of them, you know, a little bit higher than 14, 114, I mean, uh, sorry. Um, so, for example, the risk reward would favor shorts here against the highs. But this is a low probability trade, so yes, uh, you know, you, you, you could make an argument for that, but this is a low probability trade. On the other hand, for example, if you have a look at cable, things are quite mixed here as well. I mean, we, we got a rejection once again from just above 130, uh, but on the other hand, you know, as long as the 128 support is holding, we cannot possibly um, turn um, bearish. Uh, cable and this is also a major component of the dollar index. Um, the Australian and the New Zealand dollar are also showing, um, you know, they, they did provide us with some evidence of uh, perhaps the dollar strengthening, but still the first uh, solid supports that they found, they rebounded off it. So, you know, those do not really inspire as well for like big reversals. We had high hopes for the Kiwi, for example, but that failed to manifest. Um, we do want to stress out, though, that there are a couple of pairs that are currently uh, giving us some good risk-reward ratios and um, a little bit more confidence that perhaps they're going to turn. And the pairs I'm referring to are the Euro Yen and the Pound Yen, actually. Um, in the Euro Yen, we see um, five waves up, correction lower, another five waves up. We have um, plenty of confluences. For example, if you look at the weekly chart, we have equality of this leg to this leg at 129.75. We're just above it, so in, in a sense we're testing it, you know, because you know not, nothing is perfect. Uh, just a little bit higher is the 200 moving average on the weekly chart. Uh, on the daily chart now, on the other hand, we have here uh, the fifth leg equals the first leg at 130.25 roughly. Um, and we, um, and um, we also have, if I remember well, uh, the 161.8 uh, extension of this leg lower somewhere there, uh, sorry, of this leg like, lower, somewhere there. So um, th there is a lot of confluence here, and given the overbought nature of the pair, um, we are just waiting for a trigger, um, like a reversal candle, um, to get us interested in the pair. Now, on the other hand, pound yen, we can have a look at this as well, because it's equally interesting. Pound yen is testing. A major area. It in the short term it has the same uh, wave count as uh, the euro. Um, we also saw some initial rejection signals. I mean, we got a um, uh, we got a shooting star on uh, on Friday on the daily chart uh, while testing a major uh, zone. This this is a huge triangle as you see here in the blue lines. If we go on the weekly chart, you can also see the significance of, of this area. Um, so 148 is a major area and we would probably tend to trust any rejection signal that we saw up here. So, you know, don't jump the gun, uh, but, uh, you know, these two setups are definitely setups of interest for us. Um, so, um, yeah, one last thing that we can look together uh, are the bonds, because those are important as well. Um, the boom has broken down after uh, multiple tests of uh, the descending uh, trend line here, and uh, we are pretty confident that you know this bearish leg is is the real deal. I mean, uh, we we do believe that it's going to yield more weakness. If if not from exactly here, uh, we think that any rebound should be capped um, at this zone, which is. Uh, Above, just above 162.50 um, and uh, same wise we would like to see at the 10-year treasury
because we also think that um, we, we've probably seen the end of a correction higher with this ascending wedge. The break lower was uh, quite significant. It, it is displaying uh, momentum and most likely um, any rally back to this zone or back to the 200 DMA, which is uh, just above 126, uh, should find more sellers uh, very likely for a move to, to new lows. Um, so that was the next week's preview and you know a fast recap of uh, what we're currently um, seeing. Uh, we, we are always available for questions and more analysis and seeing things intraday together on the face webinar as I initially said. Um, th thanks a lot for listening and the next week's video is going to be recorded by Blake as uh, usually. Uh, so everybody have a, have a wonderful Sunday and a great trading week.